What's going on, family? It is your boy, Mark Randall III, a.k.a. Marcus Van Doom, a.k.a. The Blurtis. And this is the first episode. <coughs> Sorry about that. This is the first episode of The Problematic Life and Times. And um, this is pretty much a, a social commentary podcast about what's going on in America, um, around the world, and just pretty much my point of view of it. This is a, a, an offshoot of the uh, Midnight Marauders podcast, and um, one of the podcasts on the SXS Podcast Network. Um, thank you for tuning in, and uh, I'm, on my, I'm on my daily commute. I'm on my, um, my way to work. It's, it's roughly an hour drive. Sometimes, sometimes it's, uh, it's it fluctuates. Seventy six is, is is a weird highway, depending on which hours you get on it. But um, I got I got two subjects that I would really like to talk about today um, that I've been thinking about, and you know, I feel like it definitely needs to be discussed. Um, I know it's been all over the media. The media has been saturating it. But today we're going to talk about um, policing in America, and um, I would also like to address um, the killing of black people in our social media. So uh, let's start with the killing of black people in our social media, and then we'll move on to the policing in America. <coughs> Sorry for coughing in your ear like that. Um social media is taking it's not taking over it took over it is what it is most people get up in the morning and the first thing they check is their facebook feed they're on their phones they're on their gram they're on their twitter they're buying whatever have you and it has a lot of great things about social media you can stay in touch with family things like that um you also get more information than you would if you were just watching the news where the news is a controlled form of media. Where the news is a controlled form of media, social media is it's, it's mainly about the people, for the people, by the people type thing. There's plenty of times that I go on Twitter for my news before I trust any you know reporter in a suit with makeup on. With that being said, you can't help but see the flooding of injustice videos I'm not talking about the video game I'm talking police brutalizing Americans on on your social network feed it's overwhelming um, I can't tell you how many people I've seen killed in real life um, before social media but I can definitely if I sat down and tallied it up, I can definitely tell you how many I've seen in the wake of social media and how much of it I've seen while being casual in my own home, like in the bathroom or, you know, on a lunch break, you know, because it's, it's, it's in the feed. And this isn't a negative thing. This is just to say at one point when I would see videos of black men, black women um, and just, you know, people being gunned down by, you know, the authorities especially if they were African-American, I felt like it was my duty to watch the video and to, like, look at it and to, you know, really, 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 really just, like, take it in. I felt like it was my obligation so that that person's life would not be lost in vain. And now, as there's so more of them, as there's so many more of them, and as more videos in, are, are coming out, I kind of feel like before you watch these videos, you have to think about your social health. And you have to think about, do you necessarily need to watch this video to know the information? Because it's traumatizing us. You know, we are definitely, we are being affected deeply within our bodies, our minds, our spirits by watching these videos of our brothers and sisters being gunned down. We don't have to watch these videos, is what I'm saying. Watch them if you watch them if you feel inclined to, but you are not socially obligated to watch these videos. 
yes, I feel like as a black person, as a person in general, you are obligated to know when injustice is, is, is happening. You, I feel like you should be obligated enough to like have an idea, you know, get some facts and understand what's going on and not be totally ignorant to the fact that people are dying, people are losing their lives, um, you know, in this system and that this system has problems and the system needs to be fixed. Um, but uh, I do not believe that it is your obligation to watch that video. Um, because it's, it's, it's traumatizing. And, you know, there's a level of, um, there's a level of that won't happen to me that I feel like some people may feel. Um, where they're like, well, I would have did this, I would have did that, and that couldn't happen to me. But then there's also the level of complete helplessness that you feel when you actually watch, you know, someone die. Um, prime example was um, the Castile video when he died in the passenger seat. Was what well, it was definitely breathtaking. It was life changing. Um, and it really fucked me up, man. It, it, it really, really did. Because, you know, I think a lot of these other videos are, are probably not as clear. Um, you, you, people are running. There's this, that, and the third. Like, but this man was just in his, he was just in his, in his chair. And he was in the passenger seat of the car. His, his, his girlfriend was there. His daughter was in the black seat. And we see him take his last breath. And that's, that's a major, a major, major moment. And it was really tough. And, you know, you don't have to watch these videos. What I'm, is what I'm going to ball right now. So, you know, I do think it is our obligation to be socially aware. I think it's our obligation to be woke and to, like, know what's going on. And to just generally, I'm not saying you have to be an investigative reporter, but at least have an understanding of what's going on in America at all times. Um, just to know that this type of injustice like exists um and with that being said the other part of the social media aspect is yo take some time when news breaks before you get all over the place and just start sprouting your hatred and fueling the fire you know the prime example corinne Gaines was was was, was gunned down in her home by the by the by the police um she had her, 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 she had her, her son with her. And, um, when the media first came out, they painted this very, a very different picture than what facts later cleared up for us. And when the media broke this news, they made it, they painted this picture and I'm gonna tell you exactly how they painted it. They painted it as mentally unstable black woman gets shot in a, in, in a standoff with the police and accidentally shoots her son. And that's the picture. They may not have said those exact words, but that was the message. That was the footage that they were trying to give people mentally with the way that they broke the story. The mentally unstable black woman is gunned down after a standoff with the police and her kid was a hostage. That was the story that they were trying to paint. And people jumped on media so quick to jump on media and, oh, she shouldn't have had a gun and, oh, she should have did this and she's an unfit parent and this, that and the third. And as the days progressed, as the hours progressed, within hours, like the story was changing. As the days progressed, as the hours progressed, more information came to light. And then we've seen some things like, yes, she did have a gun that she purchased legally. You know, because America, you can buy guns. You know, yes, there was a shoot off with the cops. However, the cops fired first. Craziness. Like, why are cops escalating the situation? Um, secondly, the cops shot her son in the crossfires of trying to shoot her, which is bananas to me. How poorly are these guys trained and how afraid are they that they shot a, a child while trying to shoot this woman? And it was never a hostage situation. Uh, there was a standoff. I think her mental health was a factor, but honestly, mental health is a very gray line because they can just diagnose people 
for anything and call it mental health. Um, I went to premarital counseling earlier this week and the lady was saying that, you know, for my insurance purposes, she has to diagnose us with something. And she diagnosed us with um, uh, something to adapt, um, trouble adapting or something like that, which is just a general, a, a general mental health diagnosis. So these diagnoses can come from anywhere. Granted, did, did she have mental health problems? Probably. I feel like most black people in America have mental health um, issues because we are constantly living with um, PSD. You know, we constantly live in a state of fear because of what America has done to us and with a um, I guess aren't doing to us and how they're not correcting those situations. So yeah, we're constantly in a state of flux. But what it really boils down to is people took all this information and they had no idea what the fuck the story was and they just went around and they spread it and they painted their own narrative. And just don't do that, man. Just take some time. Wait for all the facts to come out. You know, facts matter. People like to believe they don't. Facts matter. Shit's important. You know, it's, it's, it's good to know what's really going on. Um, just take time to digest your media before you open your mouth, bro. And, and, that, and that's all it is. Just, just figure out what was going on. You don't have to be, you know, Sherlock's home in it and, and know every little aspect of it. But just before, I think everyone just sees things, they just react. See it, react. See it, react. See it, react. And just see it. And process it, man. Just process this information. Process your feelings. Process all the information. You can... Clarity can be reached. And I know clarity is a scary thing to some people, but you can just get some clarity. You know? It's important. Um, and piggybacking on the uh, Corinne Gaines situation, I would like to definitely address the police... Um, the current state of policing that we have in America... And the problem with the police department is their training. It's simple as that. Um, they're, they're training, man. They're training, they're training, they're training. It, it really is fucked up. Um, I'm, I believe police are trained for a couple months. I know a lot of those months are spent um, in the firing range. Um, I know that they are trained to get home safe. At the end of the day, their job is hard, they're public servants, and they want to get home safe. But I think what one of the main um, things that they're not really, you know, trained on is how to de-escalate a situation. It seems to me a lot of these situations are escalated by the police. The police show up on the scene and then shit goes from a, from a zero to a hundred real quick. And it shouldn't be that way. When the police comes to the scene, they should de-escalate a situation, not escalate a situation. Wherein the fact that with Corinne Gaines, they came to her house to serve up um, warrants for um, traffic violations, and they escalated the situation. They shot first. In all of these cases, the police are escalating the situation. And why are they escalating the situation? Well, because they're scared, you know? And because their job is hard. Not to be condescending, but you know what? It's a hard job. Being a cop is a hard job. But you know what? You chose that job. Like, you weren't born into that job. You know, this isn't like, you know, um, fucking Divergent where you're, like, selecting. You know, you wasn't, you wasn't, you wasn't, you wasn't drafted into being a cop. You went to a police department, you filled out an application, you wrote your name down, you waited the time period, you went through all the screenings, you went through the boot camp, you became a cop because that's what you wanted to do. Simple as that. And because if you want to take on that responsibility, then I think you need to have a level of servitude. There, there needs to be a, a point where, you know, yeah, you want to get home? Yeah, you should also de-escalate the situation. And I'm not saying all cops are bad. And I feel like that's a problem that is going down. A lot of people are um, saying all cops are bad. All cops are horrible people. Um, I don't think that's the case. I don't think anything is all bad. I don't think black people are all bad. White people are all bad. 
I, I think people who think like that are very narrow-minded and they just they are also the people